recording. Okay. So today, Derek is going to take over the webinar. Um, he wanted to talk to you guys about consistency and branding and stuff. Um, so I just wanted to introduce him. This is my hubby, Derek. And <laughs> me like a dog. <laughs> today he went emerald. Well, technically Thursday, so he'll be emerald on Thursday. Yay. <laughs> and he did it. I didn't I didn't do it for him. So that's the thing. <laughs> and Amanda went one star diamond qualifying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Finally. From Emerald to one star qualifying. <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of crazy. And hey, we're probably good we're trying to get her to like two star by the end of this month. So I think we can do it. I have faith. Yeah. That'd be cool. Anyway. So let's talk. You go ahead and do your thing. All right. Um, do I guess uh, I guess I'll tell you uh, talk a little bit about me and where I come from. Um, originally, I did personal training for about seven and a half seven and a half years. Um, I ended up getting sick with cancer. Um, uh, basically, did a complete paradigm shift at that point. Um, I went did chemo. Chemo didn't work. Um, I ended up giving up on chemo and, and fighting it holistically. Um, I have a little bit of a, of a, a attraction to Shakeology because of what's in it. And because of what's in it are a lot of the ingredients that I use when I fought cancer naturally, um, like ashwagandha, uh, shishandra berry, holy basil, which is Tulsi. Um, a lot of the Ayurvedic medicines was, was basically the shift that I went um, because I was given a 50% chance and I had no, I basically, the doctors didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. Well, I ended up finding it and winning. And then about maybe about six months later, Amanda got introduced to Beachbody and Shakeology. Um, what attracted me was the video about where it came from. You know, it, for me, intentional food is really important. Um, so I started looking into it. And I'm a, I'm a skeptic. You know, I'm one of those that I'm like, all right, let me, let me see what it has to say. And let me, I want to put it to the test. You know, I, I get a lot of people who try to bullshit me on stuff. So, like, I've, becoming, I've become more aware about what I put in my body and about what I do, being that I have, I suffer from a genetic disease that makes me more inclined to cancer. Well, she got introduced and it, it took me about, probably about eight months of taking it to truly say that this is the best thing for me. You know, and when I got to that point, I realized how much better I felt. I had the, the placebo effect, but the nocebo effect. I didn't want it to be good for me because I wanted it to be like, ha ha, it sucks. But it ended up not being that way. It ended up being something that, you know, truly every single day, like when I'm off of it, I, I feel a complete difference. Um, and I'm a, I'm a health nut. I'm, I am extremely crazy when it comes to, like, the way I eat and what I do. I'm a big juicer. Uh, I'm also going to become a master herbalist right now. So I'm, a, I'm one that is pretty educated on what goes in my body. And I can geek out sometimes on a lot of this stuff, too. So I'm not going to do that with you guys because that is really common. Um, but because of that, I had, I had that limited belief for such a long time that, you know, it, this was just, okay, let's see what happens. It worked. And, and now I'm, I'm I don't want to say cold, but now I'm a believer of the product. I'm a proof the product works. And now I wish that I would have had this during my cancer because it would have simplified the amount of money that I was spending on creating something very similar. So, and to give you guys a heads up, I was close to about $1,000 with all the mushroom extracts, with all the um, standardized extracts I was taking with all these, the whole, the whole thing, the ashwagandha. Um, I was also taking uh, mataki, shiitake. I was taking a lot of like mushroom extracts. It was expensive. So when people talk about it costing much, um, tell them to go buy some cocoa. Tell them to go buy a pound of um, kamu kamu. Tell them to go buy a pound of ashwagandha. You'd be surprised how expensive that stuff is. So for a company to have great ethics and to actually go to the indigenous people to create something that is, has already been clinically proven to work for me was a, was a big plus. So that's intentional, intentional food. Um, I also, once I got out of the personal training and started um, learning a little bit about, about the Shakeology, I'd gotten into sales. Uh, I was a Southeast sales manager for a company called Foscrete. I covered 15 States. Um, they brought me through a lot of, they spent over $100,000 on my education and training for um, neuro-linguistic programming, for um, just understanding people. There's a program called Sandler Sales. I went through the Sandler Sales Institute. Um, essentially, I went in there and I learned a lot of valuable information. And it has shaped, it shaped me to become a great sales manager and to do really well at it. Uh, I got out of it, moved to North Carolina, and got to when I got to North Carolina, I gave it up because I was never home. I lived that corporate you know, I was part of that corporate world. 
Um, so when I moved to North Carolina, I got into pharmaceutical sales. Um, basically got fired because of my beard. They took away all my sales commissions, bonuses. So essentially this business has, has truly put us, you know, if it weren't for Amanda, I mean, like getting these people involved in the business, we would have all never met. Um, and now I'm fully committed to actually helping her. Um, and one of the things that I want to relate to you is some of the wisdom that I've been given. A um, couple of topics that I want to talk about today. Um, the first thing is branding. You know, what is branding? Why is it different than marketing? Um, and then why is branding so important? Or why is consistency so important for branding? So I'll go ahead and uh, um, also before I get into that, um, I also wanted to say, you know, what it means to be, what, what does it mean to be a coach? Um, basically, in my eyes, in my perspective, in my perception of a coach, a coach is a mentor, a leader, an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur, a friend, an accountability partner, a difference maker, and in my eyes, a badass. So, for you guys, you guys are awesome. Um, we're we're not the norm, so let's definitely not be that. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever read the book called The Brand Called Me. Um, the brand called you. Or the brand called you. Sorry. Um, basically, you are your brand you are a brand all right and i was a uh, reading i was reading an article written by this guy who was um who wrote a lot for fortune or for like not fortune for forbes and he said branding is the expression of the essential truth or value of an organization product or service it is communication of characteristics values and attributes that clarify what this particular brand is or is not a brand will help, basically a brand will help you encourage to buy a product and it will directly support whatever sales or marketing, um, marketing activities are in play. But a brand does not, a brand does not explicitly say, buy me. Instead it says, this is what I am. This is why I exist. If you agree, if you like me, you can buy me, support me and recommend me to friends. So essentially you are a brand and Basically, you don't want to have that sales tactic. You don't want to go off to people. You want to be more like the um, how to win friends and influence people than a person that's, that's trying to just sell a product. You got to build that rapport. And the difference, when you talk about the difference between branding and marketing, branding is strategic. Marketing is tactical. The whole concept, have you ever heard of the concept, train smarter, not harder? That still applies for business. You want to you want to basically go and do things smarter. You want to work smarter, not harder. You know that's why they talk about being organized. That's why they talk about all these habits. There's a book that talks about. It's called Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. It is phenomenal. It makes you realize what you do and what you don't do. And what people don't work on with personal development is what they don't do. They a lot of times work on what they do do and try to do better at what they do do. It kind of sounds like poop. Do <laughs> <laughs> um, but marketing unearths and activates buyers. Branding makes loyal customers and advocates of those who buy the product. So branding is important. And when you talk about branding, you have to also look at, you can't just post something and expect people to truly sit here and go off and, and say, okay, you're this type of person because it takes consistency to have a brand. So you don't right away start off by saying, I am X. You have to build that. And this is a business built on consistency. I can tell you when I first started, um, the stuff that Amanda has, you know, I was backfield. I was kind of just observe the situation, look at what's going. I am a business developer. She is really good at social media. So right now what we're trying to do is we're trying to divide and conquer. Use my attributes that I'm good at and partner with the things that she's, that she's good at. And, you know, we have the advantage of being that there's two of us but imagine if one of you guys had the ability to, 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 to grasp and, and perfect these habits that will make you successful. You would be a top 10 coach. And the only way to get there is going to be consistency. And we do a lot of, um, we read a lot of Tony Robbins, and he has this awesome quote. And, it, and the quote is, it's not what we do once in a while that shapes our lives. It's what we do consistency, or consistently. And when you think about that, think about that not just on a physical standpoint, but think about that on a metaphysical standpoint and on a standpoint coming from the people you're trying to brand yourself to. So when you look at, when you look at people on social media, one of the things that I've learned, um, especially being in a small town, um, if, they, if, you keep doing things, if you keep doing things consistently, people are going to develop this, what we call a brand, this the thing about you. And it's crazy because now 
you know, I can go in into work or into the city and walk around and people know me because of Amanda. All right. They don't know me because of me. They don't know that I went to school for exercise science and biology. They don't know that I did personal training for seven years. They don't know all this stuff. So right away when they come to me, they come to me to talk to her about health and wellness because of her brand she's built. And it's crazy because like when, when I say we get a lot of people, we get a lot of people that reach out to me to reach to her. A lot of people are like, especially guys, they're kind of nervous because they feel uncomfortable. Like I'm, you know, like it's going to be a big issue that a guy's talking to my wife, but those, that's not the case because our, our, our mission in life is to, to show people how to live and sustain that healthy lifestyle. You know, that's our mission. And that's where Beachbody comes into play. Beachbody has given us that formula that allows us to be able to drive forward with our mission without having to reinvent the wheel with servicing people with these personal training, serving these people with this, this one-on-one nutrition coaching, servicing them for the support. This is kind of like a simplified version. This is a simplified formula to show people how to live and sustain that lifestyle. And the only way was that, that we were capable of having these people come to me to get to Amanda was through her brand. Now in Florida, it was different because they knew who I was. I had developed a brand. I did personal training for, uh, I had done it for seven and a half years. It, I was a successful personal trainer. I was making over $5,000 a month and that was cash. Like that's nice. You know, and I took a complete pay grade to get insurance for my the whole medical thing. And because of that, I did learn a lot. You know, I learned about neuro-linguistic programming, which if you guys ever want to learn about that, I can help you guys with that. I learned about, yeah, I learned about understanding humans. And being that I was basically told that I was going to die, well, not die, but giving me that 50% chance, you know, the perception is what I put in my mind, not what somebody else puts in my mind. You know, that allowed me to become more humble, you know, to become more aware of the moment, you know, what's going on at that very second. You know, so like life had brought me into this particular pattern to shape me and mold me to be who I am today. And and consistency is not just on actions that you do, but actions that you accept in life. Like if you keep doing something wrong, like if you keep taking your hand and putting your hand over a fire and burning your hand and keep doing it consistently, all right? Do you think after the second, after the first time of burning your hand, you're going to do that again? You're not. So basically, the, the, the signal that goes from your hand to your brain is something that is embedded in your body. So you're going to consistently not do it now because of you know what the pain and the pleasure is behind it. So consistency is not just, it's not just necessarily about you doing the one thing, but it's about what life has shaped you to become who you are. And that was, that was the consistency of life developing who you are. Now, it's for you to learn the lesson. If you don't learn, they call that ignorance. You know, and I don't mean it to be crazy, but that's what it is. If you're not willing to accept a problem and learn from it, you're basically going to be 10 steps back versus 10 steps ahead. So life, life consistently put me in a place every single time something happened for a reason. So now because of what Amanda has done, because of our actions, because of our lifestyle, we have people just reaching to us and we've accepted the change in who we are. And now it's kind of like our mission and our passion to make sure that our team is successful and is successful be- well, through other people's consistency of what has worked, what hasn't worked, what are the outcomes, what have they learned? The most important question you really should ask yourself when you get a no is what could I have done better? You know, that is the most consistent. I would go on sales calls. Like, it's crazy. I I opened up a contract for Walt Disney. I opened up a contract for Publix, for um, North Carolina DOT, Florida DOT. I had set up almost $5 million worth of contracts for the company that I worked for as a sales manager. And the reason I was capable of doing this is because, one, I would always ask for a no. I would always try to get a no. I was not going to play this you know, I was very, I built rapport. I built the relationship. People buy from people they like. The product is definitely secondary. It's the truth. Um, but the beautiful thing was not only did I try to go for a no in a humble way, I would also ask myself, what could I have done better? So I created a diary of failures. But failure is, is not bad. Failure is good. If you keep failing at the same thing twice, you're doing something wrong. So that's essentially where I'm at now. It's, you know, I've always asked myself, what could I have done better? And those are things that y'all should definitely ask yourself. 
you know, and there's a lot of things that you could do, but the key to success is being intuitive about who you are and how you could better yourself, you know, and, and like they say, and, and I'm going to bring a very broad concept, but it might make sense. Um, I'm going to bring belief, not, I don't want to bring um, stereotypical, stereotypical religion, but I want to bring belief. Belief is the easiest thing to do, yet it's the hardest thing to do. And belief in yourself is hard, but it's also easy. And it all just depends on what, where you're at in life and what you've, you know, where you've come. Um, but, but there's a, you know, there's a, we're, we're doing a little bit of, um, a little bit of personal development with Tony Robbins. And he had this beautiful um, section talking about um, neuroscience. All right. And one of the examples I kind of already brought in there, but he said, each time we experience a significant amount of pain or pleasure, our brains search for the cause and record it in our nervous system to enable us to make better decisions about what we do in the future. And he was talking about the neuro, neuro associate, associations with flame to your hand to not doing it, it again. So basically where we are, where we're at today is as far as Amanda and I, we are in a point where we've, we've done what you shouldn't do. We've done what you should do. And we're now realizing that, you know, it's, it just takes one person. If one person can reach out to a hundred people, think about what wouldn't have happened if you didn't reach out to that one person, because that hundred people could be 5,000 people, you know? So if you want to make an impact, in, yeah, if you want to make an impact in life, you got to be very in tune and you got to realize you have to constantly keep bettering yourself. And through the only way to better yourself is to consistently do X, whether it's consistently being more active in your groups, whether it's consistently being more positive on your Facebook, whether it's consistently focusing on what you could have done better, you know, cause consistency is like, consistency is like the most important key to success. You know, I don't mean go crazy, you know, but, but seriously, consistency will get you from point A, from point A to point B. I gotta see how much time I got. It'll notify you. All right. Can I add something really quick? Yeah, go for it. Um, oh, it's a okay. common thing in our household. So, <laughs> I'm like, oh, great idea. Crap. It's gone. It's gone. Um, so, like, <laughs> um, for example, when, like, for inviting, let's say, you have time to invite people on like Mondays and Wednesdays or something, or those are the days that you take time to talk to people or follow up. Um, and you do like a hundred follow-ups each, each time you do that or something like that, for example, and you're only doing it like once or twice a week. That's not really consistent, but you'd have better results if you're doing, let's say five people every day, you know, it's better. It's, it's yeah. It's just better. <laughs> it's like saying you want to run a thousand miles in a year. If you don't consistently run, if you don't consistently run two miles a week or two miles a day at the end of the year, when you've only ran 50 miles, that means that you have that many more miles to go after. So that only puts you and sets you that far back. So consistency, if you can be consistently, like, let's say you want to dedicate three hours a day to this business. If you can consistently do three hours a day, to the business and consistently have an organized plan, you can't fail. Mm -hmm. The only thing against you at that point is time. Everybody's time is different. Amanda's time wasn't right away. I, today I signed up a coach and when I, when he said, when um, the coach relations like, answered the phone call and said, thank you for being a coach since 2013. Like, <laughs> I was like, shit, I haven't done anything since then. <laughs> this is kind of crazy, you know, but I'm that far back behind now, you know, imagine what I could have done if I were consistently putting in a, like an hour, an hour a day, a seven hours a week to gradually increase your business, let's say 1%. If you can increase your business 1% every single month, just think about at the end of the year, that slow, gradual consistency in increase is now going to keep doubling the next year and the next yeah. year. So the factor that you're playing against is time. That's it. Can I have, I have another Go. Thing. So, um, since I started really working my business last June and so it's really, it's taken me nine months to quit my job, which is pretty freaking good in my opinion. 
Um, and since November, my pay has been consistently increasing $100 every month. And then last month, for the first time, it increased to $500 a month instead of 100 So it was like, over time, can you imagine, even if you're just increasing your check $100 a month every month, mm -hmm. that's going to add up and it's going to, you know, that's going to be huge. And it can equate to you being able to quit your job if that's your goal or buy a car <laughs> or whatever your goal is, you know? And it's all about consistency. Like, even when I wasn't really working my business, I was more like a hobby coach, thinking I was a career coach, but I wasn't because I wasn't doing the money making things like, you know, following up with people and making contacts and doing stuff like that. Um, I was doing more of the fun things like marketing and social media and playing around with like, I'd spend hours editing photos. I mean, seriously, I should have spent hours like making contacts instead, but um, or going on videos. Yeah, making editing videos and no, 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 going and watching videos. Oh, scrolling through she my. She consistently does that. <laughs> not, anymore. not anymore. I avoid the feed. Um, sometimes it sucks you in though. But yeah, um, we would. I would lay in bed and watch funny videos for hours, and yeah, waste. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah. So, um, but the one thing I did consistently do since the very beginning was posting on social media three times a day. I, we have 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Um, I did not have any, um, any like background in that. I had, I was never a person who people were like, Oh, let's go to Amanda for help. Like I had no friends. I had no, um, an affinity or an influence on social media or in my community or anything like that. I was just some chick, um, who used Facebook like everybody else. And now, you know, I have built this thing up. It's taken a year and a half and now I'm still, now I'm here, but you know, of consistently posting on my Facebook and my Instagram three times a day, most of the time in the beginning, sometimes I miss days, but. And the one thing that I get, definitely want us to, to, to contribute to this is reach out to Amanda. She could tell you what not to do because she's probably done it. And I'm being serious. She's, she, you know, I don't, I don't mean this to, to, to demean or any the situation, oh, but yeah. she's, uh, she, in the beginning, she reinvented the wheel. Well, sometimes you, cause you have to just try, you have to just go out there and do it. The thing is, is if you, as a new coach, if you're sitting there, like I need to learn all this stuff before I do anything, you know, you're like, cause you want to know anything. You're, you're mm -hmm. nervous. You're scared. You're like, Oh, if somebody asked me a question. I'm going to freak out about it. I won't know the answer and it's going to look bad. But, you know, you just have to go out there and, make, you know, learn. Because you can study all you want, just like in med school. People study all those years, and then they go into their, um, uh, re uh, what is it called? Residency. Residency. And they're like little babes, and they don't know what the hell they're doing. You know what I mean? She was watching Grey's Anatomy <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> That's, those are all my reference points. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a guy. It was, it was kind of awesome. There's a, a gentleman who um, who basically took the neck brace off of one of the patients, and she actually ended up breaking her neck. It was she had a fracture in her like C two or C three, and yeah, he was a resident. And it's like that was just pure common sense. I'm like if you, no, he was a resident. If you would have gone to med school, wouldn't you think not to take off a neck brace? I mean, that's like practice? CPR one hundred and one yeah. common sense. Anyway, but. You know, like you just have to do, that's how you learn. You learn as you go. So, um, you need to consistently be failing forward. And so, a mistake I made for a long time, cause I was like, oh, I'm just going to power through it and I'll figure it out, you know, which is great. But I didn't look back at what I was doing and compare. I didn't, um, evaluate what I was doing and see what worked, what didn't, you know, that's really important to do. Um, you know, and yeah. that's how you can grow and change and fail forward. Like he was saying, he had a book of failures because he looked back at it and evaluated it and learned what not to do and how to change it. So that's really important to do. And guys, you know, like I'm going to bring um, health back into play. Um, Shakeology is not a, is not a fix all problem. But if you take Shakeology every single day, you can fix all problems. 
you know, and when I was going through, you know, when I decided to give up chemo, everybody, first off, I had everybody in my family going like freaking out and fighting me because there is an 89% chance that it will possibly come back. Uh, even, with the chemo. even with, with the, chemo, the chemo, statistically, that's they weren't even sure if it would work. Anymore. So they were, first off, they tried putting put the perception of fear in my head, which, you know, gave me the wisdom of not fearing many things. But um, the most the most important thing was when I decided to fight it holistically and and to to be to be able to go after it in such a pure way, in a way that was supporting my immune system, not killing my immune system. The only way for that to happen was for me every day to be consistent to be consistently juicing and I smelt like broccoli. That's how much I was juicing, it was you know, to consistently take my supplements. You know, like I said, imagine spending, you know, almost a thousand dollars a month, like literally almost a thousand dollars a month on superfoods, on, on superfoods and super nutrients. You know, I had to be consistent. That was the only way I was going to be able to fight it naturally. Cause it builds up in yeah. your system. So it's like, when you look at, you know, when you look at that, if I didn't do it, you know, my, my cancer had spread into my lymphatic system. If I wasn't consistent, all it took was that little bit to just go haywire. Mm -hmm. And it just basically, I guess, is the only way to put it, you know? And, and that's the importance of consistency because, you know, we already say all things are possible through faith and, or not faith through belief. You know, faith is also this, I think they're the same thing in my perception, but you know, all things are possible through it. And, and the only way to have those things be possible is to be consistent, to consistently believe that I will be okay, to consistently believe that I won. You know, look in the mirror. Like, I'm terminally sick. Like, I can't stand on the floor. I got, like, pins and needles going through my feet. Chemo was, like, the most drowning, most horrible thing in, in my, that I've ever done to my body. You know, and I've had, and I had seven surgeries back-to-back -back before chemo, and chemo was worse. You know, and... What I'm saying is I had to consistently wake up every morning and look in the mirror and tell myself that I will fight and I will win. You know, I had to, I had to put that perception in my mind. I had to look at, look at winning and not look at what it took to win. You know, I had, to be in the, I had to be there in the future, but in the moment. You know, so those are the things that I had to do. And, and the, reason, the reason consistency is so important because if you, keep, if you want to brand yourself, and you want to be successful in this industry, you are a product, a proof the product works, and you're also a direct relationship to how many people you help or your success is. And to have these people draw to you, you have to have that brand. And in order to have that brand, you have to be consistent in doing whatever it is that you do. So that's my two cents. I did this under 30 minutes, which is Yay. shocking. <laughs> Seriously, that's really shocking. I could sit here and talk for hours. I can, I can add something. Go. Um, so, like, your brand is going to be who you are, basically. It is who you are, but you want to attract people because you want to work with people you like. You want to help, you know, you want to help everybody. But you'll attract the people who, um, who are like you and who relate to you. So just share who you are. and. Um, Okay. So, you know, I touch a computer. It's like <laughs> squirrel, squirrel. <laughs> so, you know, you just got to share who you are and, you know, be open and honest about that. And people will attract to you because that's your brand. Your brand is you. And you just, um, the more you grow, the more you do personal development and learn about yourself and how to effectively market and make pretty images and stuff like that. Um, the more <laughs> successful you'll be. And the more people you'll attract who are like you. So you guys remember, like seriously, take this home with you and, and, and embed it in your head. Don't be salesy. Branding. Yeah. Look, branding is strategic. Marketing is tactical. All right. Don't be that 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 person that's, you know, like like, like the definition that I got, marketing unearths and activates buyers. Branding makes a low customer and advocates of those who buy the product. You don't want to just sell it one time. One thing that I kept telling the VP of the company that I worked for, 80% of our business should come from 20% of our customers. Mm. And that 20% of our customers are going to be repeat buyers. And if you keep building that 80% and keep, I don't want to say waste all of your time with them because it will not waste, but I don't want to say invest all of your time with them, you know, but be compassionate, 
be there with them because that's part of your brand. So oh, we got less and than a minute. Great customer shit. service. You know? <laughs> great customer service will keep your people around and they'll refer more people to you. Train smarter, not harder. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Or just grab people and throw them in and forget about them. You know what I mean? Hey guys, if you have any questions, um, I have a lot of like really awesome library of really good stuff for human development and um, like person understanding personality types. If you guys ever want to go through that stuff, seriously, like I said, I would be willing to take it out and, you know, share the wisdom that I was given. And, you know, it's, it's, it helps you better understand so that you can be, uh, be more like them to build more rapport with them. So to speak their language basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can do a call on that too. But yeah. I think this is going to shut off. Okay. Well, thank you guys for coming. Thank you. I'll do a post call discussion in the group. Okay. So chat if you have any questions or anything. Okay. Peace. Good night. Good night. Good night.